Yes, really. Uh, I, I, I was sure before the game that it would be really difficult and that we, that we won the game I'm, I'm really pleased I'm really happy about because it was not guaranteed before the game the Salzburg is, is too good but we, I think the first half an hour we were all over them we played some of the best football we've ever played it was exactly like you have to do it we were quick and we were super super, super decision making using the, finding the free player using the gaps all that stuff that was really brilliant but being three nil up is kind of obviously a challenge, and um, and we, today we we didn't really um, solve that in the right way. To be honest, that's because um, they changed the system, but that was not a problem for us in in our um, um, in our own possession. It only was a problem because we or it became a problem because we. Instead of doing what we did in the first half, now using the wings, acceleration, coming on the touchline, passing the ball, coming in the box, stuff like this, we, we tried to pass the ball through the center. Lost the ball there, one pass in their center, and in the back of Fabinho, it was their number 10 now free, uh, the, 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 the offensive midfielder. They turned, pop, counter attack, and they changed the momentum of the game. And that, that they, they then were like, because they were here, they were, not, they were a bit impressed, I'm sure, in the beginning, but then they thought, oh, okay, here's something in for us. So then they, then they started scoring. Half time we spoke about it, we tried to sort it, didn't work out 100% to be honest. They scored another two goals, so then we won it. That was a massive and a very important le um, um, lesson for us today. Um, but I prefer sorting it then in the game with the result because if we would have lost it, we would have had the same problems to be honest. We would have, we would have to speak about the same problems, but now we won it. Uh, and I think at the end it, it's deserved as well for the first half an hour and we, we scored four goals, that's how it is. But um, we have to learn, we will learn from that game. But do you look at it as a worry that you were 3-0 up and then it became 3 all, or do you look at it as a t test of character because the, the player seemed a bit uh, as if maybe they lost control when it was 3-3, but then you came back in the game and won it? Yeah. Not sure. I have to think about that. How I see it, but it's 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 like it is. It's not too important about that. It's um, look in football um, is really a nice game, obviously, and there's always a chance to 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 come back in a game. We knew that. We we, we did that before, and um, tonight Salzburg did it. And I told the boys in half time, they will not break down. They will not because they are here to enjoy the 95 minutes. Um, they want to enjoy the atmosphere. They want to work hard. They want to have any result they can get, and we open the door for that. And um, so so we have to 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 deal with it, um, and yeah, as I said, we, it's such an important lesson. We can so learn from it. We will that we will learn from it. But now we have to obviously starting recovery already and playing Leicester on Saturday. Christian Fuchs was tonight here as a, as a pundit, I think. So um, I'm not sure what he's what he's what he's telling his guys. If that we if we play in the like in the first 30 minutes. That would be good. The other, the other um, 60 or whatever, 50 minutes, uh, not that good. But I know the boys. Um, yeah, will take the right information after the game because I help him them with that. Perfect. Much appreciated. Thank Jürgen. you. Thank you so much. Well, a postscript to that victory for Liverpool tonight. The EFL have fined Liverpool 200,000 pounds. 100,000 of it is suspended for fielding an ineligible player in the EFL Cup. Uh, they will now take their place in the next round against Arsenal. So uh, Liverpool have accepted that fine and we will move on to the next round. And we'll move on to Group H, Chelsea's trip to Lille. Tammy Abraham picking up his first Champions League goal. Yeah. Champions League yeah. man. And, well, how, how important do you think that might be? Just to, bearing in mind that they lost a fortnight ago against yeah. Valencia at home. Mm -hmm. How important would that be? It's important just to get the group uh, alive and also the chances alive for the next stage. And uh, what I said, for Lampard as well personally, you know, he knows the Champions League, I think, better than the whole squad as a, as a player and then now okay. as a coach. So he knows what to expect in the Champions League and what to do, especially when you want to go through the next, uh, the next round. So I think we'd be delighted with this, uh, with this win and these three points, but also for the team, you know, for the morale of the team. It's been a lot of, a lot been said about Chelsea, you know, transfer windows, they can't, they can't buy players, uh, they got a young team, they're still at Chelsea. There's always something going on by Chelsea. So I think it's a good, good for the morale. What do you think about the way Tammy Abraham has been treated throughout his career? He's been out on loan. He went to Bristol City. He went to Chelsea and played. Uh, sorry, he went to Swansea and played in the Premier League, but then went to Villa and has, has had game time and now 
it seems to be working straight off at Chelsea. Yes, it's uh, Abram and all the others, you know, how they how the Chelsea Academy dealt with them, you know, with Mount, with Abraham, with, uh, with the others, you know, they came very young. I think they won the FA Youth Cup in, yeah. in 2016, you know, the, the, um, you know, the teachers, you know, in the academy were very good. And, uh, and as well, you know, where to loan them. It's not like you throw your players all around the place in, in championships, you know. They, they, they have a plan, they have a methodology and, uh, and big credit to, uh, to Chelsea Academy and all the, the coaches. And now they can come back, they're mature. They play in championship and they, mm -hmm. they succeeded in championship. And, uh, I think Derby Conde, yeah. Yeah. and it was a I think it was a good thing for Chelsea to be banned, you know, in a sense. <laughs> well, because yeah. it gave the, opportunity the to the young band. guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, imagine they did they weren't banned. The they probably got another strike of what, 40, 40, 50 million. Yeah. You know what I mean? And never got the chance to no, we don't never have the chance to see this guy, this young yeah, kid exactly. flourish, yeah. you know, so at the end of the day it's always a plus and a minus, you know, on certain things. So I'm very happy for this kid. He's doing very well for Chelsea and, uh, and Lampard. Good stuff. Well, the other game in the group was between the two victors uh, a fortnight ago. It was Valencia Ajax, described by Kevin Keatings. Call it a night. Big Could Williams? Be... Oh, yeah, by a mile. <laughs> by a mile. I can't even compare that with you. This is a strike. If there was a folly, it would be goal of the year. But I think he's already there, up, up there for goal of the year. But that, for, from that angle, man, it's just what a strike! Unbelievable. There was no holding on from the, from uh, the goalkeeper. Bang! Bang! Foul post. Oh, and that drop as well, you know. And he got it in his locker. Yeah. I mean, we see the second strike that he had on the crossbar, similar. Yeah. So, so yeah, he's always looking for that. He's always looking for a strike like this. But this is amazing. Now, Pareko. Yeah. You don't quite appreciate how bad it is from that angle. Until you see this angle, this is this is this. It's, it's so far wide. Yeah, just hit it on a target, man. Just just keep it low. This is. I don't know what happened or what he tried to do there, but I mean, I think they're still searching for the ball. <laughs> yeah, I think it is <laughs> on its way to Mars. Okay, <laughs> one more group to show you. We'll do that when uh, we return. Plenty more goals. Don't you worry. And Depay on target again. So Group G in a moment. Good promising start this from Borussia Dortmund. Sancho is away from his man, and it's a good early save from Kola. It's another corner. It's a great ball through, and Masapus is in with a real chance here. Marvellous save by Perky. Here's the free kick. Oh, and they nearly beat Perky at the near post. Brantz. Hakimi. Sancho is in the middle as well, waiting. Hakimi looks like he's going to go it alone here. And he does so to devastating effect. Akraf Hakimi puts Borussia Dortmund in front. All of his own work. Hakimi playing the one-two with Brandt and then sizing up what was opening up for him. Sancho was the only pass available. Hakimi thought about that and then thought, you know what, I'll go myself. It's a, a terrific finish for what is his first ever Champions League goal. Oh, well worked this. Soufal with the cross. And an opportunity that strikes his own player. Ole Yinka maybe, still alive. Soufal arriving, Royce away. And Brandt puts his laces through it. Suddenly, Slavia Praga short of the back. Jaden Sancho is in here for number two. What a missed opportunity. The flag stays down and suddenly there's an opportunity here. And it's into the side netting. What a chance. Tetzel it is who's put it wide. Brandt. It's Hakimi. And he settled it. 
his second of the night. Borussia Dortmund on the counter attack. Clinch the points. And having scored his first ever Champions League goal earlier this evening, Ashraf Hakimi enjoys his second. It's 2 0 Borussia Dortmund. It's a night that the 20 year old will never ever forget. And that is that from the Eden Arena. Job well done for Borussia Dortmund. Their hero, the 20 year old Moroccan international Ashraf Hakimi, with a goal in each half to get the better of Andre Kolar, who in between made a good look, a couple of good stops himself. The final score in the Czech Republic then Slavia Prague 0, Borussia Dortmund 2. Terrific victory for Dortmund, which has them top of the Group F table. Alongside Barcelona, a single point each for Slavia Prague and Inter. Next up in the third match day matches, Inter take on Dortmund and Slavia Prague are at home to Barcelona. Well, we'll discuss Hakimi uh, a little bit later on on the show and his two goals and the impact he had for Borussia Dortmund. But that is after we have seen uh, some more goals as we round up the matches from the Champions League tonight. And birthday boy on target for Chelsea. After they, they scored three goals in the second half, so it becomes difficult. But you know, we play for to win again the Champions League. We play for just we focus in each game. So basically, it was tough second second half, but we won. So I'm happy for that. At, at three nil, you looked to be in control. What were your thoughts at three all? I think when we were winning three, we we need to score fourth and fifth and sec, uh, number six also like. It's it's a bit, little bit tough because the human body, like the human mind, just like a little bit. Okay, we're gonna win. We're gonna score again. We're gonna score again. But they made the, they made the game tough for us. But happy for to 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 score the first goal and yeah, we get the three points. That's the most important thing. You don't have to think about Salzburg till December now, and a lot can change uh, until then. But uh, how dangerous can they be in this group? I think it is very dangerous. I don't know about the first game. I mean, Napoli. Uh, the result, I don't know. I have no idea about it, but. We have to think now about each game. I think that's the most important thing. We well, you know all about uh, Salzburg, Sadio. Um, what were your thoughts on your, your former team tonight? Wow, it was really good, honestly. To be honest, I think, uh, yeah. After 3 now, 3 now up and the camp 3 3 was a little bit tough game, but uh, yeah, we just tried to push as a team like we always did. But uh, yeah, I think, to be honest, we deserve to win, even if it was a tough game. Uh, you have to respect all uh, this kind of game all the time, so that's it. The more important is the three points, so we got it. I think, uh, yeah. They'll be boosted by the three goals they scored here, and they'll be different at Salzburg, won't they? Yeah, to be honest, I knew this because I've been there for two and a half years, so I know them. They never give up, and they try to push all the time, and it's what they try to do, and uh, they, they cause us problem. But uh, yeah, we try to result it as a team, and finally we score four goals. More than them, I think. Uh, yeah, that's it. We're used to you two on the on the score sheet. What did you make of Andy Robertson's uh, goal tonight? Oh. Finally scored. <laughs> yeah, finally scored. But we, yeah, we're happy for him. He doesn't score a lot, but he's he's given everything in the game. He's given everything for the team. So yeah, we're happy for him. Well done, thank you. Thank you. It's interesting what Mo Salah said there. The, the human mind. It's it's like Liverpool expected to win. You three 0 up and you expect to win. I mean, it's very difficult to criticise them because they went on to win the title last year. But could elements like that be their downfall in the season? Not only for in the Champions League, but also in the Premier League, if they are so good that they destroy a team in 30 minutes, but then go, right, that's it. And it's not. Yes, that's just uh, the warning for them. It's just a warning. As long as they are focused, you know, with their big determination and concentration, Liverpool was, will always be a, a, a very good team. And, uh, and as you say, you know, we're all human, you know, mm -hmm. when you are so much cruising, then the concentration sometimes can go a little bit down. And you have to have a very good opponent in front. And Salzburg were very good to take advantage of that, uh, of that uh, sloppiness of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Liverpool. 
But don't you have to play a slightly different game when you're 3-0 up? You don't have to push, you don't have to play that way, you just have to control the game the way you want it. Yeah, but sometimes controlling depends also on the opponent. If an opponent sits back and know like, okay, we lost the game, we just try to get you know, a good, a good result and not just make it 4-5-0 and make it an embarrassment, it's different. But if you've got a team like Salzburg who just keep pushing and just just have no fear in playing on Anfield and always looking for that goal. And don't forget, they had a goal before the half. So they always had that feeling that maybe there was more into this game. And they did. So controlling the game, yes. But if you have an opponent who plays on the same pace as you, you can't always control the game because they will come. Salzburg certainly uh, proved that. Six goals in the first game for a victory. Three tonight in defeat, which has left the Group E table looking like this. Napoli are on top. They got a point against Genk. They still haven't conceded yet. Didier Domi and Nigel de Jong with me this evening. Nigel, that Liverpool performance, all the best. What changed from the first to the second? And all the worst of Liverpool? I think yeah, it was combined, <laughs> combined in two halves. First half amazing. I mean, the first half an hour was just outstanding. Three goals uh, in the space of half an hour, and then yeah, the worst when they uh, when they started the second half, sloppy, very sloppy for Liverpool side, and uh, gave Red Bull the chance to come back in the game. Did they just drop off? Do you think, Diddy? Is that it? Just shut down. A little bit of uh, you know, the concentration, but as you said, you know, we must give credit to Salzburg. You know, they never gave up. Um, always that intensity they are very young one of the youngest of the champions league but they kept attacking you know minamino was unbelievable then halon you know this team is a uh, is uh, i will make sure i uh, i watch all watch the them exactly <laughs> you want to watch them don't you i i, I will make sure i watch salvo because yeah. they they were unbelievable you know one of the youngest team you know to come back at anfield from uh, a three nil down yeah. that's uh, a lot of quality I mean, but the quality Liverpool showing, as you're saying, Nigel, I mean, the, the blistering pace of, of Mane, Firmino just a little one-two, bang. Simple as that. Yeah, the, you know what DJ said before the, before the break as well, is the intensity they play with, especially first half, uh, the first half an hour, it's like any team will feel the pressure once you come in the Anfield, you know, in Liverpool, and just play against a team like that. The combination football, first touch football, they know exactly where they're going, they know exactly where the, the quality the colleague will be ending and this is a well-oiled machine you know and everybody knows their place you can tell that in the Liverpool squad even though when the guys who are on the bench they're not playing they're not complaining because they know the first level is just too good it's just too good and you just make one two changes changes so yeah it is it is it was hard for for Liverpool to cope with that for, for Salzburg to cope with that in the beginning Look, Salzburg had their chances though what DJ said as well the the front was just amazing, you know, with Minamo, uh, Minamino, uh, uh, um, number nine, He Chang Wang. They were just all over the place in uh, the second half. But you're at home, you're the champions, 36 minutes gone, you're 3 0 up. It's just that goal before half time, first of all. And then this is football, they're all humans. When, you know, they came back at 3 2, you've seen Liverpool a little bit more. Uh, uh, nervous and uh, and that team of Salzburg you know they took the chance and uh, came back at 3-3 so that's the magic of football you know mentally Liverpool were not on at the beginning of the second half and, and is it because they didn't control the game the, the, the second half of the game because you do look you're 3-0 up it's been that easy mm -hmm. and then suddenly yeah and these 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 were the, the things were so sloppy you know you yeah. give, you give energy to an opponent, unnecessary energy, because these are things you can just get out of your, out of, out of your game, because then they get confidence again and they get chances again. This is one of them as well. I mean, they were not focused, not concentrated when they came out of the dressing room, so I don't know what it was. Maybe because they, they took Salisbury maybe a little bit lightly, but, you know, it, 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 brought, it brought tension back in the game for no reason, especially when you play at home. I mean, Liverpool at home, that's a no-brainer, you know? And this... Oh, we saw good defending from Joe Gomez there. This is the incident that free yeah. kick. And yeah. Just look where the free kick is taken. Yeah. They're a few yards ahead, but yeah. taken quickly. But it's more, that's common. That's, more, that's, that's quite common. You, yeah. you never, you but never. Then, yeah. And a night of decent volleys. That's a great. That's point. a good one. Yeah. That, that's a, a player to watch as well. Mino, Mino. Mino. Yeah. Yeah. He was all over the place, you know, defending. Then he was attacking. He's, a, he's very good on the ball. Very technical. He looked technical. Yeah, mature. Mm. It's a. 
is a very good uh, uh, player. And you know, you were t talking about mm -hmm. the methodology of uh, Red Bulls, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Salzburg, and uh, Leipzig. Nice. But one of the things that uh, they take care of is the intensity all the time in the game. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they could have scored again. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, Liverpool were very fortunate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, here as well. I mean, you know, they were not scared. And that's the, that's the beautiful thing that you see today as well. Like, young team, they got young players, but they, they had nothing to lose. And, you know, and they, they just fed off here. It, that was extraordinary. That he'd only been on the uh, on a pitch, how, pitch how long? <laughs> For, what, like, five minutes or ten minutes? Or something? <laughs> so he came on and he scored he'd again. He'd been on four minutes. Uh, four minutes. Four minutes. Four that minutes. was all it was. I mean, that's all he needed as well. And he's in the form of his life at this moment. Yeah. You know? Being but this kid, this wonder kid. In, that's in too life. easy, isn't it? It's too easy. Yeah. It, that can't happen, especially when you have a defense like, uh, an international high defense like, like Liverpool. Um, and then this, it was unlucky as well. A great touch again by Firmino. Firmino. Uh, again, again, again an assist, yeah. again him. You know, that's, a, that's a, the thing that I love about him. He's so, he's not, he's not, uh, he's so, um, he's not selfish. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, he always wants the other, his, his colleagues, score a goal. And this is one of them. Typical play of Liverpool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now look at this again. They go for that one. Oh, he's short. Trent Alexander-Arnold takes it quickly because he knows that there's a gap there because they push out. I mean, and they, they obviously did, uh, did it to beat Barcelona and they've yeah. done it again. And again, it, was, it almost resulted in a goal again. But um, yeah. Okay, let's uh, get some reaction from Anfield. Well, Mo, you secure the first win since becoming the champions, but Salzburg didn't make it comfortable for you in the second half, did they? Yeah, I think they had uh, they had a good game and. Uh